Welcome everybody once again to CVTV and we are live at Wisp of Palooza and the hits keep coming. We have joining us right now Roberto Vargas. Roberto is the technology platform manager for active cabinets here at Clearfield. Roberto, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Brady. Thanks for having us today. Of course. Could you tell us a little bit about the company? Sure. Clearfield is a telecommunications manufacturer based in Minnesota. Uh, we've been in the industry since 2008. We're a public company. We basically uh, manufacture uh, fiber connectivity solutions for the industry, inside plant, outside plant, last mile connectivity. So that's part of what we do currently. Fantastic. Now, um, Clearfield's FiberFlex Active Cabinets uh, platform, uh, how can that help WISPs kind of gain market share and improve their, ultimately, their ROI? Well, that's a good question, Brady. Uh, basically, our Active Cabinets platform is a solution that helps WISPs and, and telecom operators in general to basically uh, bring their network closer to the edge. Why is this important? Because um, as technology evolves and more bandwidth is demand for networks, uh, you need to complement your data centers or central office or shelters with this kind of solutions uh, near the, the edge. That's really interesting. Uh, so what exactly are active cabinets and uh, kind of where can they be deployed, you know, in the network? Okay, our active cabinets platform basically is a solution, it's like a cabinet, as it says, okay. that can allocate OLTs, uh, but it also combines uh, power solutions, cooling solutions, uh, fi uh, fiber distribution ports, so it's an all-in-one solution for um, fixed line network operators and also wireless base station ap applications for bi fiber backhaul. So it's a, it's a complete solution basically. Yeah, it's really intelligent stuff for sure. What are some of the benefits of deploying active cabinets uh, you know, for the WISP? Okay, that's a good question. You know, uh, historically speaking, uh, the WISPs have used um, microwaves for transport or backhaul needs. But as, as I said, as the bandwidth demands continue growing, the reality is that uh, probably the microwaves, or at least we believe, will, won't be able to supply that demand. So you need fiber networks uh, to do the, all the backhaul and transport for them. Okay. So that's that's basically the reason uh, uh, we should start thinking about this kind of solutions moving forward. Currently, nowadays, you see that more or less the bandwidth demand is around 200 to 300 megabits per second. Sure. But the expectations by year 2030 that can be multiplied by 10. So just imagine you need you you need a robust fiber network behind all this, basically. And that's why it's so good to be kind of forward thinking with that. Uh, why right now? What the timing for WISPs, you know, to consider Clearfield and yes. um, active cabinets maybe on their networks? Sure, absolutely. We we believe that WISPs play a critical role in all this uh, deployment of networks. Uh, as, as you know, uh, the bid fundings that is a federal, federal government uh, fund that is going to be used in the upcoming years here in the U.S., Okay. of over 40 billion dollars uh, represents a great opportunity for WISP to start attacking certain niches out in the market for example small villages or probably unserved rural areas that probably demand more fiber network solutions nowadays that the incumbent big telecom providers probably are not that focused on those markets so it's a great opportunity for the WISP you know to attack those those opportunities down there. Well, for sure it sounds like a tremendous opportunity. Yeah. Um, any business metrics that maybe people want to think about uh, for WISP when analyze using fiber networks for us? Sure. Uh, we believe, for example, that the best case scenario for WISP will be the greenfield opportunities, yeah, basically, of okay. course. But if you consider the brownfield opportunities, you have to take a look at some metrics, for example, of uh, certain niches or populations or areas in the country of probably less than 5,000 um, people there, or probably you can uh, measure them, for example, if you have like 20 or 25 uh, homes and around 500 people per square mile, yeah. probably those areas can be a sweet spot for them. Uh, that sounds really sweet. Anything else? Well, uh, Brady, I think that uh, all this broadband connectivity that we basically work on is a national interest topic. For, for the U.S. in general, because it, it brings opportunities to uh, to create jobs, to improve our health system. Uh, it's something that um, 
product is related with uh, AI or artificial intelligence moving forward, smart city applications. So at the end of the day, something that is really, really critical for the for the for the U.S. as a whole, you know. And we truly believe that um, more uh, or better services in the wireless spectrum basically needs more fiber at the end of the day. So it's a combination of both scenarios, fiber and wireless, that basically play together. So. And that's a common theme that I'm definitely hearing a whole lot of Bert, Roberto. Um, if people want more information sure. specifically on Clearfield, where can they go? Well, they can log in, in our, to our website, uh, seeclearfield.com. There's a ton of information there, white papers, uh, links to different products. So we'll be more than happy to help them. Uh, thank you so much for the time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Of course, yeah. And once again, this has been CVTV with Clearfield. We're live at Wispapalooza 2024. Take care.